Well, actually, we, we had a, a poll throughout Europe, and uh, people was asked uh, which is the best place you want to be uh, beside your hometown. It's, it was Tuscany. So. Okay, so we were the first to, um, uh, to issue a law on uh, open source, promoting open source. I'm not in particular in favor of uh, laws of uh, promoting open source because uh, usually there is something written on a paper and nobody really applies. But uh, it's uh, oh, well, it, it means that we have kind of a feeling towards open source. <laughs> uh, more recently, we have uh, um, um, Italian law, um, state law, uh, where um, every manager has to consider the open source alternative before the others and has to just justify his expenses on proprietary software. Of course, it's paper, but still, uh, it could uh, theoretically have uh, uh, financial consequences for the, uh, the top manager of, uh, of the administration, so it's something that pushes towards uh, open source. Uh, <coughs> in Italy, uh, it's the regional administration who holds most of the data. Uh, the state is more of a collector, and the lower level don't do much, but uh, most of the things are collected at, at that regional, regional level. So it's a fairly big uh, region, for Italian standard at least. Uh, they got a uh, lot of data, uh, well, plus 25 plus terabyte of data, especially imagery, but also uh, vector stuff. Uh, they migrated all the uh, topographical map to uh, a proper database. So they have uh, several databases of uh, several hundreds of gigabytes. Uh, so it's, well, it's a serious stuff somehow. Um, uh, they act uh, as an inspired node. Uh, in Italy, the, the decision was to, to keep an inspired uh, central level in the Ministry of Environment and to have the region as uh, local nodes. And then they decide at the lower level how they want to organize. So they are obliged, obliged to uh, publish WMS, WFS, WC, uh, CSW, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You can have a look uh, to, for, to what is uh, uh, published uh, at this address if you want. If you want. Okay. There are a number of people who are uh, working on the GIS in the, in the region. It's more than 400 people. Uh, they have uh, central offices uh, with a core team of the, well, GIS specialists who keeps the in infrastructure alive. Uh, but they also have a number of local offices that deal with uh, agriculture, forestry, engineering, uh, bridges, roads, and uh, all sorts of stuff. Okay. So <coughs> it's a pretty diverse environment. And the mission of the Regione Toscana, or as all the region, uh, is to maintain, uh, well, produce first and maintain all the geographic information over its territory. Um, and it's a mandate of uh, facilitating the access both to information and uh, to the use of this information. So for them, having software that is usable for everybody, it's a plus. Okay? It's one of the important things for them. <coughs> And uh, in, uh, in Europe, we have this uh, uh, ARUS convention that uh, requires um, states or region to publish their environmental data for public screening, just like in Japan. OK, they came from the usual uh, stack. Uh, so Oracle, Oracle Special, uh, ArcView, they, they still had ArcView uh, around uh, since very recently. Uh, ArcGIS, ArcGIS for, for publishing on the web. So more or less what we are used to see, well, what we were used to see in the old days. <coughs> in 2009, they decided formally to get rid of this and to go for free software. Uh, and so the idea was to migrate the whole structure both the server and the client uh, to uh, geographical free software. Um, in, the, in the meantime, they also are migrating uh, from another department. They are migrating all their desktop to, um, to free software. 
that's much more complex. It's a few thousand of uh, people working, so it's not, you, you can't just go and, and change everything and put an Ubuntu machine on it. But uh, they, they already migrated first to uh, Firefox, then uh, LibreOffice, uh, and slowly, slowly, they will eventually arrive at that. But uh, the fortune is that uh, geographical uh, entities, it's a bit separated, so they can go uh, at their own uh, pace. <coughs> It was decided to work with the communities, which is, that's uh, one of the reasons why I like to do this talk, because uh, uh, this was uh, a non-obvious decision. So they understood early that that was uh, a key factor for the success of the operation. Uh, and they want to contribute back. I see very often people that take, uh, less often people that give. You know? uh, of course, it's not finished. We are still in the process of doing it, but we are quite advanced. So, uh, I mean, we... we past the point of no return, so I think I'm entitled to talk about that. <coughs> so it was very, very clear from the beginning uh, that all people that will work on this project must be committers of the project they are used. Uh, that was, uh, I think, a clever, uh, clever thing. Well, it was very good for me being a committer, but uh, uh, I think it was good because I have seen uh, other regions in Italy or other places that uh, employ their usual uh, IT uh, well, firms or you know societies that um, employ them to. Just, just let them know that oh, okay, you stop uh, Oracle and you do also PostgreSQL, and they can do it. Of course, they hire people, and but it's not the same thing. Okay, so they, they understood clearly that if you are inside a project, you work better with open source than if you just try to. Okay. Um, okay. They said from the beginning in the uh, in the formal bit, they they put that all the code uh, written must go in the central repo. So uh, the one who were not entitled to do so or couldn't guarantee this, they couldn't access to the, to the bit. Okay, so that was an important choice. Of course, there are a few exceptions for tools that are really useful only for them, but it's really, really very exceptional, a few scripts, things like that. <coughs> so they didn't decide to go free to spend less. That was very clear. That, uh, that they didn't um, want to uh, save money. Uh, of course, it's nice if it's a side effect, but it, this was not an, uh, an aim of the, of the project. It, not even performances were important. Okay? So, okay, they have to have their minimum level of service, uh, but they didn't go open source because they want faster map server or whatever. Okay. The idea was to spend better than money. Okay? We all know that most of the uh, well, most, maybe all the big uh, GIS companies are American, so we want to keep as much as money as possible in Italy. Uh, we want to have tools that are usable for everybody uh, and not just uh, those who can buy it. So we want to make our university students uh, have their tools for working with the proper in infrastructure and so on. So make both the data and the software that, that allows the use of this data available for, for everybody. That was the basic, basic idea. So a choice which is not technical, which is a, a, a political one, cultural and political. So it's deeply rooted in, well, in a way in our um, yeah, political culture in, uh, in Tuscany especially. Okay. Of course, the, the other um, pillar of this, this building is that they have uh, strong uh, skills inside the, uh, the region. That is not always the case. Uh, very often, these are empty shells, you know, or with people that is able to buy things from outside but not really to, to use it. They had it, so they could do a much more uh, confident choice in a way. Okay, so phase one was training. They, they understood early that they had to train people to uh, understand these new tools. Then, Developing what is missing. Of course, we have all this nice software, but we all know that it's not complete. We we need here and there uh, things to improve, and then support. Having a, a nice software deployed, but not supported by by anybody. Uh, don't have uh, um, not having a phone number to call or an email to to write. It's uh, well a recipe for disaster, of course. So that was the the idea. 
We start with training. Uh, we did a lot of training. We as a Fornalia, I must say. Uh, yeah, almost uh, everybody in uh, who used more or less JS uh, went to, to the courses. Of course, most of them were general courses, cartography mainly. Uh, a few were uh, on analysis because, of course, less people is doing analysis properly. Uh, they had this uh, well, acceptance uh, sheet to be filled uh, compulsory, and uh, the scores were very high. So, uh, and they were very high because they were acquiring new skills. Even those who say, "No, but I still want to use my Arc something," uh, but they said, "But I learn uh, something about WML, WFS, things that uh, they were not used to." Okay. And I think this uh, is not just because I'm good at doing training, but uh, I think it's because uh, open source software is better for, for training. You, you learn more of the function and less of the buttons. Okay, so I think this is, uh, has a relation, a strong relation with, uh, with uh, uh, the type of software we are using. Okay, I don't want to go into the detail of, um, about uh, what we uh, developed in these uh, this, uh, years, but uh, GML support in uh, Goodall was uh, rather poor. We improved it. Uh, uh, we had these types. Uh, we had the um, Specialite driver. Who of you knows Specialite? Wow. The developer will be happy. Uh, so the, the Specialite driver in uh, Goodall GR was improved. It was quite poor at the time. Uh, we had a function to geos or geos or whatever, uh, like this. A few you you see in the comments all the reference to Regina Toscana. We did uh, bug fixing for for this, working with this uh, size of data. I mean, you you find bugs uh, a bit uh, more easily. So <coughs> we developed this uh, uh, nice, I would say, um, um, library, which uh, it's a split uh, in a way of uh, geos. Uh, it has a special function that don't fit into JOS, and uh, it, this can be used uh, on its own now. Um, it was uh, well, there were quite a few functions in PolyJS, and they are now a proper library that can be used by Specialized, by QJS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, lots of things on the PolyJS. Sandro Santilli worked for us uh, for, for a while. Uh, lots of uh, topology. That what, what you find about topo topology in uh, PodJS now is uh, largely due to the Jonathan Scan. We, we made this uh, make valid, which is quite useful. I don't know if any of you have already used it. OK, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and now it, this is in uh, uh, L LWJM. So it can be used also from QGS. We have a nice plugin for that. <coughs> Improvements here and there, GML, they use heavily, of course, GML, and so the uh, topological GML, so they improved it a lot. Uh, we also worked on the Specialite. Uh, we made a, a system of uh, reusing lots of functions that's uh, <coughs> that were used by PodGS. So basically, you have more or less the same function in PodGS and, and Specialized, which is very good. So you can use it more or less transparently, one or the other. <coughs> support for metadata insights by Specialized, support for uh, SLZ, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, these uh, last functions were just added. Uh, this was not ba made by, by us, by Faunalia, but uh, other, other people. Uh, this is um, not known, uh, I would say, but uh, interesting um, web mapping framework, which is the, the nice thing is, uh, is, the <coughs> Sorry. is that it is uh, dataless, so you can set up your, uh, your thing and you, you take your data from whatever WMS, WFS uh, it's available on the net. <coughs> We did a lot of work, not surprisingly, I think, uh, uh, on QJS. So lots of things on symbology. They need to um, uh, publish uh, real maps with the cartography options. So there, there were a lot of um, architects and planners that they were quite uh, picky about uh, transparency on the borders and the rotation of the symbols and all sorts of things. So we did a lot of things with that. 
Um, some of this probably you, you already use it. You know, SLD is very useful. I, I discovered that uh, people that uh, were not using QJS, they start because they were web people, you know. Uh, they started using it because of this uh, SLD import export. So you can design your SLD with QJS. It's possibly the easiest uh, way of doing that now, uh, etc. Then we improved the field calculator, uh, adding a few functions. Uh, we, we improved, well, no, we, uh, we developed uh, the recovery of uh, um, geometries of features from WMS, which is something that uh, not too many people know, that, but you can get a vector from uh, the WMS. And uh, we can do it now from, uh, uh, from QJS, lots of bug fixing. Um, now we can run your, your plugins from a custom path, so you can put uh, your uh, QJS on a, uh, a disk or on a um, pen drive, which was not possible before. Uh, we developed quite a few plugins. Uh, RT SQL layer, you can run arbitrary queries uh, from, uh, from QJS without having any uh, permission uh, on the database, uh, apart from select, of course. So you can have your queries stored on, on your client rather than on, on the database. <coughs> Uh, you can extract data uh, from, uh, cut your data uh, from, uh, from a database. You can have all your data there and cut at a uh, com commune, uh, municipal level, uh, okay, and extract uh, one by one all the vector that belongs to each uh, of the, the municipalities, etc. We have uh, a map server export plugin. It was present in the earlier version of uh, QJS, but it has been completely rewritten uh, based on a map script, so it's much more powerful. Actually, I invite you to test it because we still are uh, in experimental phase, so any feedback it will be will be good. You can create a vector from DBF tables for the or points or lines, uh, etc. You have the mirror map. I don't know if, if you have seen it, but it's nice. You can split the canvas of QJS in two, or three, or four, etc. And you can keep this in your project and so you reopen it and you you can compare WMS or photos and etc cetera, etc cetera. then uh, we have uh, a very specialized plugin which is uh, used for serving of uh, um, pre and post earthquake uh, buildings um, which is so it's very tuned to Italian uh, um, situation, but I think it's, it's a lot of software, so it can be useful for you to extract features and to reuse it in your plugins. Okay, LW Geom uh, plugin, as I, as I mentioned already. <coughs> then we start with support. Uh, it just uh, we are in the first year. Um, it's mainly, of course, on desktop. Um, support for, for server is more of a consultancy. It's, it's a, a bit of a different story. Uh, of course, it's email, telephone on site, etc. Uh, we included also a um, certain amount of hours for bug fixing so that they, they can you know, fix things easily without uh, restarting with all the bidding and process, etc., etc. Uh, the, the funny thing that I discovered is that uh, people were surprised that they were a bit shy of asking because they, they were surprised that uh, people could actually answer and reply and uh, find solution for their problems because apparently they are not used to, to have this kind of service for proprietary software, which is, uh, which is funny. Uh, and of course, our main advantage was that uh, we could deliver a fix just like this. The next day, you can have your, your nightly build of QGS with your bug fix, and that's Nobody can compete really on the, on the proprietary world. So our problem is really to go to people and say, well, please ask me a question because I can, I can uh, reply. Okay. OK, so here you have um, a list of uh, what's, what's available, um, well, more or less thing that you, you probably know. Um, weak point it's an empty slide <laughs> because the only thing is that we, we couldn't find a proper replacement for AutoCAD that's that's thing that uh, is something that uh, I think we should uh, start working seriously on that I'm not um, fond of uh, CAD I find um, ugly environment but still 
for the administration that they use it. So it's uh, pretty strange that uh, in all the free world, I think the CAD is, uh, is the only area where really we didn't make any any big impact. Okay, so what what has been uh, concluded that uh, of course the cost total cost it was much less. Uh, so they had much more resources to improve things, to have more services around what the, what they need. Uh, a lot of things that uh, they did on their own before, then now they are free to call people to, to help them. Uh, so they basically kept the same budget, but could do much more. And the nice thing that they learned is that uh, they could influence the development. So if they need something in PostGIS and QJS, of course, if something it makes sense, but they could have it. They could have uh, a different uh, direction of, uh, of development. Uh, and also for us as developer, it was very good because they provided real and heavy use cases. Uh, when you develop your software, you think that something is working, but when you, you put it on the, on the road, then it's, it's difficult. Uh, and uh, so I think it was um, yeah, both sides profit by, by that. Uh, they discovered early that uh, some of the things they, uh, they improved were more than improved by other subjects, other public administration, some Italians, some French, some other places. So that was uh, a, a pleasure for them. Uh, they discovered that, we, that with their money they got more than they paid for, so that was good. Uh, and so they are starting uh, networking with other administration uh, because, of course, the needs are more or less the same and uh, they are sharing it. Uh, and uh, what they develop now, they know that they have to put some money to maintain it, but they are not, everything is not on their shoulder. So they can uh, rely on others to keep things alive. Uh, which was not the case for, for the custom development they had before. Uh, what is uh, uh, problematic is that not everybody is understanding this. Uh, in Italy, we don't have a national strategy uh, about that. Uh, in uh, central government, they spend a lot of money uh, in um, strengthening. I mean, uh, they don't have the same efficiency. Um, the Tools of collaboration, top down, are not really working. They have this, uh, you know, round table and everything, but it's not really working. What is working is people to people collaboration. Technical collaboration is working very well, and the uh, free GIS word in Italy is working very well. We have a mailing list with uh, 700, almost 700 people, and very often the same people that are in the top level that uh, discuss things, serious things on, the, on our homemade mailing list, which is uh, interesting. Uh, okay, there are reasons, I think I'm a bit long now, but there are reasons uh, why uh, the others are not doing the same. There are good reasons and, uh, and bad reasons. Of course, you are faster if you decide everything on your own. You don't have to discuss with, uh, um, uh, with the community. Sometimes uh, the community has strange ideas. They, sometimes uh, they don't understand you, etc., etc. So it's, it looks nicer to go ahead with your fork or whatever. Uh, but, but, of course, that's not going to work on the on the long term. How much? Of it? Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. You have to think only on your, to your platform. So if you compile on uh, your Windows, uh, everything works, and you don't have to bother if uh, if Saga doesn't work on the, on the Ubuntu or whatever. The other thing is that. To do this, you need some internal skills. You cannot really rely on somebody else because if you uh, if you buy a package, more or less, maybe works. Uh, but if you if you want to go into this process, you really have to understand what's going on. Many many times we, we were discussing, okay, should we implement this this way or the other? Okay, do it do it like this. And if you don't have the internal skills, that's that's going to be a, a big a bit of a problem. Or either you trust very much your your uh, your software provider, or or it's going to be a problem. Uh, so the more you understand what's really going on, the better it's your <coughs> development. Okay. So it needs a lot of work. They they did a lot of work internally to support this uh, this choice. So if some of you want to do the same thing or want to, to go home and uh, convince their administration to do the same, uh, let them know that they should never work on isolation. That's bad. Uh, they should share with the community. From the beginning, you don't have to you have your tool ready and then publish, okay? And uh, so work together with the with the community. Uh, avoid as much as possible solution that can 
seem nicer if you develop on your own, but then they will break up sooner or later. Uh, and make sure that when you hire a developer that it understands all this very well. It's not someone that goes you know, into his office and type and that uh, stuff. Okay. And of course, read everything often. Okay, thank you.